morning and welcome to Light in the Darkness. It's an honor and privilege to be with you today. As always, thank you for letting us minister the gospel into your lives. Today is going to, I pray, really bless you. I wanted to speak today from the subject, I need to fast. You need to fast. We should be fasting. But here's the thing, I wanna bring you actually scriptural perspective on fasting. See, what is correct is to say, we need to fast according to the biblical understanding of fasting in the New Testament. And also, we need to also have a revelation of what fasting is not. So first and foremost, this is not a way to lose weight. This is not a way for us to be uh, looking at dieting and bringing discipline into our lives because fasting is not given to us in scripture for us to earn the favor of God. It used to be about following the instructions of the Lord in the Old Testament, of God in the Old Testament. But how many of you know when Jesus came, the Bible tells us he came to bring a new covenant that the old has passed on. It has passed away. It has been fulfilled and we are now living in a new covenant. Not that actually the old was bad and the new is good, but that the new is the fulfillment, right, of what God wanted. It is the fullness of what God wanted us. Jesus came about to bring a finished work. So where does fasting fit into this? Because so much around fasting has been misconstrued. So first and foremost, I have to tell you, fasting is not given to us to bring favor in our lives. You do not have a prayer request that God will only answer on the other side of you fasting food. Okay, so this whole thing about going on a diet and then getting a reward from God on the other side. So God, I need an answer in my business. Now I'm going to not eat this for a week. That is not because now what you're doing is you're saying there is a life you can have in God full of favor on the other side of your absolute fasting. Your withholding will earn you something. That's not the case. So I want to say you need to live In fasting, you need to have fasting, but fasting is not about food. Fasting is about focus. I believe in living a fasted life. In other words, stop consuming, stop doing things that distract you or that derail you from the awesome revelation of who you are in Christ Jesus. Live a fasted life. Look around you. Social media is more toxic for people right now or can be more toxic for people right now than a huge chocolate cake. Because although the big chocolate cake might give you a few calories, you might be suicidal after spending a day on social media or it might it might drag you into depression looking at stuff that is not meant to be for you. God wants your focus. Fasting is about stopping what distracts you and derails you from who you are in Christ Jesus and the promises he has for you. So let's talk about fasting for a moment. In Matthew chapter four, the Bible tells us Jesus was led by the spirit, verse one, into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Now, was Jesus uh, struggling with temptation in his walk? No. Was Jesus out of favor with God? No. Jesus was perfect, blameless his whole life. He was God, part of God, son of God. He is as close to God as you can get, sinless, blameless. He had no need to earn himself into favor. But why was he led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness to to be tempted? Because Jesus' life was for us. His walk was for us. Jesus is led into the desert to be tempted and to fast 40 days and 40 nights. Now, can I tell you something? Everything Jesus does in his life is an overpayment. He doesn't bleed only enough blood to wash us of our past sins. He overbleeds blood at the cross. In fact, doctors will tell you his, the way his death was documented, he died when when it was decided he died, not based on human ability. In other words, Jesus suffered more than a human being could endure. The amount of blood he shed was a supernatural amount of blood. No one would live through what he went through 
leading up to the cross, let alone the cross. So it's a supernatural overpayment. The devil is always in credit to God in the work of Christ Jesus. Okay, So when we see the Spirit leads Jesus into the wilderness, 40 days and 40 nights, I have to say this, human beings cannot medically survive in a desert without food and water for 40 days and 40 nights. Most doctors would say three days without water in a desert, you will die of dehydration. Jesus goes 40 days and 40 nights. Why? Did he need to get closer to God? No. He was fasting a supernatural amount for us that we would never need to fast again to earn the favor of God. I'm not saying today, let's just eat ourselves into an oblivion. That's not the conversation is not about food. The conversation is about favor. So he fasted food and water supernaturally to earn us a supernatural amount of favor. Because in the Old Testament, fasting was a requirement about earning and showing yourself disciplined and approved for God. But Jesus declares us perfectly embraced, never having to do anything to earn the favor of God except receive what he's done for us. So his fasting in the wilderness was for you. Okay, so now we look at this and we see, wow, when the devil comes to him, he says, if you're the son of God, make these stones bread. Jesus responds, it is written, man shall not live by bread and bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And Jesus gives us how he is empowered to overcome, how he is released to walk against temptation. He actually says, I'm not living for the approval of God. He even shows us that actually the very word that came out of God's mouth is the one that feeds me. And he specifically in scripture, in the Greek language, is referring to one instance where God spoke audibly over Jesus when he's baptized by John in the river Jordan. And out of heaven comes these words, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. So the conversation here is Jesus says, it is knowing I am loved before I do anything for God, knowing I'm a son and a daughter of God, that I don't have to earn that status. I'm not a servant. I'm a son and a daughter. That is what gives me the power to walk uh, over, to walk free from temptation. In the midst of temptation, I don't yield to it. Okay, so Jesus is even showing us a deeper truth that the power to overcome is in receiving the identity we have in Christ Jesus with God first. So now some of you are saying to me, but pastor, in Matthew chapter 17, there's a very clear scripture, right? Verses 20, where Jesus says, because of your unbelief, assuredly, I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here and it will be moved. Nothing will be impossible for you. And he's talking about delivering someone from a demon. He says, however, this kind, this demon does not go out by prayer and fasting. So some of you would say, but Jesus himself says, in order to see a demon leave, in order to do great Great work. Sometimes it requires prayer and fasting. In other words, fasting is required to operate in supernatural power. Well, I have to tell you something today. That verse, these do not come out except by prayer and fasting, is not in the original Greek writing. That is a verse added in later on when translations were taking place. In all of the scripting of the Bible, that's not in the original Greek. So we don't know if Jesus actually said that because it's not in the original writings. It's not a part of the original script. What we do know is Jesus said, if you have faith like a mustard seed, speak to the mountain. So he put the emphasis and the original writings did not put the emphasis on fasting. It put the emphasis on faith. See, humanity always wants to bring it back to a formula. But here's the thing. You don't need to fast to have the power of God on your side because Jesus has fasted for you. You need to have faith in Jesus and you operate from his strength. You need to place your faith in him, seeing his supply, and he operates through you. For without faith, it is impossible to please God. And it pleases God when we walk in authority and we walk overcoming our circumstances, our situations. So pastor, what are you saying? We never fast? Categorically not. I have to say this. Fasting is crucial, but it's not about food. It's about focus. 
So whatever is starving you of the good news of the gospel, maybe some of you, I would highly recommend, all of you fast the news more. All of you fast Facebook stories and conspiracies and theories and what's going on, fast that stuff. This is what you should feed on. Feed on Jesus. Maybe for some of you, the Holy Spirit leads you that you need to hold back on some things in your life. Fasting food is great, but let me just say this. I've witnessed people who go into it, I'm going to diet, and I myself have had a challenge with weight my whole life. And I found myself going, I'm not going to eat that. And then literally within hours, that's all I'm eating. So it's not about making the emphasis my discipline. Fasting is about placing the emphasis on his discipline. Jesus living the perfect life for you, earning it for you, possessing it for you, suffering for you, overcoming for you. You do not need to withhold from food in order to encounter favor. But you know what? As you get that revelation and the Holy Spirit leads you, he'll show you and guide you what to fast. Some of you need to fast gossip. Some of you uh, need a fast, uh, a panicking about, about your, your, your finances, you know? Fasting is about focus, right? It's not about earning favor. It's about shifting your focus to where favor is for you on the finished work of Jesus. I know that some of you watching might have a deep struggle with food and addiction, but the way out from that is not earning it. Like, I'm going to stop doing this because you can't. You can't stop in your own strength. That's why Jesus walked a perfect life for you. So to even literally overcome addiction, you need to receive more of the finished work of Jesus, not cut off more of the addiction. You need a revelation more of him and his righteousness. I love it how Pastor Prince teaches that even we need to understand that in our weaknesses and our brokenness, confess the righteousness of God we possess in Christ Jesus. I'm righteous in Christ Jesus. I am not trying to earn something. God has earned it for me. He freely wants to give it to me. He freely wants to supply. I totally believe in fasting. I totally believe in cutting off the things that distract us, that derail us. Even the Holy Spirit will lead you in your health. You know, I've spoken to people that have said, uh, you know, as I was meditating on the word and I was meditating on the Lord, I just felt a thing in me that said, you know what, just lately just chill back on the coffee. And they stopped the coffee. It wasn't about, hey, I'm going to now be, I'm anti-caffeine. It's just, you know what, I just feel for me just to be led to stop this. And later on, they found that actually their body was rejecting the caffeine and not functioning properly. But that wasn't because of I'm going to be disciplined. It was being led by the Spirit. You know, the Lord wants to lead you and guide you, but it's through a dependency on Him. Even in my life, I, I find that when I make a decision, today's the day, Monday's the day. You know, Monday's always that day. Monday, carb-free week, calorie-free this. Today, I'm going to decide I'm not going to lose my temper. What's the very first thing I do? I realize how weak I am. I realize, in fact, Paul says in Romans chapter uh, 7, he talks all about literally when he, when he studies himself, he concludes he's a wretched man. Everything I don't want to do, I do. In fact, he says, I practice, like I get better at it. I get better at doing bad things. And everything I want to do, I never do. In other words, the stuff I aspire to do, I can never do. And then Romans 8 is a continuation of 7. They're written in conjunction. They're written together, right? What does he move into? Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Therefore, now there is no condemnation. Now, while I'm feeling this way, while I recognize that everything I want to do, I don't do everything I don't want to do, I do. What is the revelation heaven would say to me today in my broken, fallen state where he literally declares in Romans chapter 7, oh, wretched man that I am, horrible man that I am. What would God say? What would God speak? Fast? No. God says what? Hey, shift your focus. Where is your salvation? And he says, therefore, even in the state today, Romans 8 verses 1, therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. He shifted focus, right? He has a little nugget for you before we end. It also says in the scripture, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to to the Spirit. So some of you might catch me right now and say, you see, pastor, even Paul himself says it's about how we walk. 
You will only know you're not condemned if you walk according to the spirit, not according to the flesh. Can I tell you something else, friend? That part of verse one is not in the original text. It was added in, just like this comes out by fasting. In fact, the original text only says one thing. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, full stop. That's what's in the original writings. Again, what's the focus? The seed, mustard size, looking at faith that the mountain will move, or I must pray and fast, or is the focus here how I walk, or is the focus where am I seated in Christ Jesus? God wants you to walk in the spirit, but that's a revelation of where you are positioned first in Christ Jesus. It sounds controversial, and I know it does. In fact, the gospel is controversial because it's so categorically clear. If you're in Christ, you're a new creation, a new creature. God wants you to catch, you are my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased, my beloved daughter in whom I'm well pleased. Before you do anything for God, he's done it all for you. And we walk a holy life from the revelation of where we are seated and positioned first. Fast the stuff that's stealing your focus, that's derailing you, that's robbing you of faith in Christ Jesus and feed what feeds your faith in Jesus. Can we receive communion today? I wanna just bring you back to the focus of the cross of Jesus Christ, focusing on your supply. Today, we take the bread and that is representing the body of Jesus. And we say, this is the body of Christ broken for me. My faith for my healing is in his suffering for me. I'm healed by his stripes. And as we break this, we receive it together today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Healing is ours by your broken body. And we speak over the blood. This is the blood of Jesus shed for me. All my sin, all my failures washed away. Today I'm declared by Jesus' work a precious, perfect, pleasing child of God. Favor is mine through the sacrifice of my Savior. I receive that today. Amen. I pray you were blessed. I pray the Holy Spirit will lead you into living a fasted life. It's not a diet. It's about getting rid of distraction, feeding our faith. Till we see you again in light in the darkness, be blessed. <laughs>